Hey, we here with Michelle Sade today on Talking All That Jazz with G. Fields, my special guest today in the house. <laughs> How you How doing? How you been? I'm I've fine. Been, been good. It's been a long time, you uh -huh. know, but I've been seeing your movement, and I know that you have been doing some amazing things out here in Atlanta. So I would like to just start with the foundation because this show is about the foundation, whether it be the foundation of anything. Okay. Bridges Hip Hop is where we bridge the gap between the something and nothing or the old and the new or the rich and the poor. Right. So today I would like to just kind of pick your brain a little bit about, you know, the early Atlanta. And you was on this early Atlanta scene. Yeah. How was that? I came to Atlanta in 2000. Wow. Yeah. And it was different here. Like now, it's completely different than when I came. Okay. When I came, I fell in love with Atlanta. I came and visit. I came and visit for a week and I stayed. <laughs> okay. Since 2000. I stayed. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going back. I'm, I so, love it here. So, what, what was it that kept you here? Um, the energy. Everybody was so friendly, nice, and I hate to say it, but that era is, everybody was rich. <laughs> like, yeah. everybody was getting money, you know? Minority. Yes, yes, of that course. the first time well, that you Atlanta's saw? Atlanta's majority minority, yeah. so. So is, yeah. is, that, is that the first time you saw minorities controlling the wealth? Yeah, wow. and it was amazing. It was amazing, and everybody was showing love. You know, I became a realtor in um, 2000. Oh, wow. And then Same I had, year. Yeah, I had to get out, you know, starting a new career. I had to get yeah. out and make it known, like, hey, I'm a realtor over here. I'm selling houses. <laughs> right, right. So everybody was so friendly and supported me. I gave out my cards and, you know, blew up really fast. And those people that I met back then, uh -huh. it's so big now. Like, they're yeah. famous. Yeah, a lot of times they were yeah. just regular people They're at that time. People. See, that's what the foundation is about. Yeah. It's about you being there earlier on. And, and you was able to even get out here and start a, a career, you know, prior to what you was doing and prior to what you was dealing with up north, right? Yeah, well, I, I've been all over. <laughs> I'm just like... But where was your foundation? Where did you actually was, anchor before Atlanta? It was New York and then Miami. Okay. I spent like a year in South Carolina and then came here. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But when you got to Atlanta, you knew that this is where you wanted to be. Yes, definitely. You got oh, to know. Wow, that's good. That's good to know. So I know that you have some ties to the music industry, and I know, yeah. you know, you had artists and you were managing, and you have been managing people. So yeah. let's get into a little bit of that. And I know that things are very different now from the last, you know, few years. You know, it changes every three, four years. So how did you adapt to that change with the management? Um, you know, I wear a hat, like different hats. And with the management, you know, it's sometimes gets challenging. You know, you have to be, it's very hard to get on as an artist. It's not easy. Atlanta is a little bit easier than other states. Facts. But um, I do know a lot of people that's in the industry. So it was a little challenging, I have to say. You have okay. to put your work in, you know. You're absolutely. So what are some of the things that you wanted your artist to actually watch out for, being that you was here? I know he was relatively young at the time when I met him. Yeah. Um, what What were some of the things that you wanted him to watch out for in the industry? Um, of course, you know, contracts yeah. and people just trying to reel you in saying, hey, you know, sign with me, sign with me. Right. And then you can get locked into things that you can get out of. That's just so important because I know people right now that mm. doesn't even perform or do anything because they're locked into this one contract and yeah, they just can't get out. Yeah, so you was able to avoid those pitfalls with your artists. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So definitely. working working with the younger artists, knowing that your ear was tuned into you know the foundation of hip hop. Mm -hmm. and, how it evolved, especially coming from New York. That, okay. that was just like where hip hop started. Yeah, it did. And this is where people were winning in the 80s, in the you know, late 80s, early 90s. And you fast forward and you see how different the music is. Like, mm -hmm. how was how your ear working with you? Was it working against you? You know, was it working with you? Because I know sometimes the younger guys, they didn't take much from what we did. 
it kind of created something totally different. Um. Yeah. The the music has changed a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. Two thousand. Um. Yeah, it has changed, but you know, I'm I'm from the Bronx. Oh, so hip hop started out. Right. So I I still have the ear for it. I still love hip hop. I still love rap music. Everything. You know, I'm a music person. I love all music. See, that's key. Mm-hmm. You just said something very important, and yeah. this is what I like to talk about: the separation. And we were talking about this with a few of my colleagues a couple of weeks ago about rap mm-hmm. and hip hop right. being very different. Right. Which is not bad that people are rappers doesn't mean they're all hip hop artists. Right. Because you know hip hop was more like a culture with the graffiti and the fashion and trendy. And it's still kind of trendy here, but they kind of lost a little bit of what the foundation was when they started kind of bringing certain cadences and things like that into the music industry and some of the sounds and them not sampling the music and just banging and making sounds kind of orchestrated a whole new sound. So, you know, that 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 was very important that you just said that rap and hip hop cuz very few people separate them. They are different and um it has changed a lot since it first came out. But it's mm-hmm. always changing. Yeah. It's always changing. Hopefully for the better. Yeah, and that all music is always changing. So, yeah. you know. Well, you know. along with the music, Michelle, mm-hmm. you know, not only the music is changing, the violence is increasing. Yeah, I know. You know, because they're associating the violence with the music. And that's not right. something we grew up on or had intentions for hip hop to go in that direction. You know, as far as if anybody had a problem, we tell them, you know, we took it on wax. We put it on wax, you know. You said yeah. something about me. I went there. I went home and made the a song that beef. was harder. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Now it's like the street guys are actually becoming the artists. Like they're actually signing people that probably had a body on them before. That's what makes them a bigger artist now, you know, if they have some beef. How do you feel about that? Um, Yeah, it's it's gotten very serious, you know. And I think it all started back with the Smalls and Tupac and the beef. and, And from then on, it just started being beef, West Coast, East Coast. and Yeah, and now, and now it's stuff. just more about a chain. You mm-hmm. know, if, if you got a bigger chain than I do, you know, and no I don't that. like the fact that you flaunting this chain around and I'm broke and yeah. you're out here getting money. Yeah. You know, or your diamonds is real and mine's fake. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's, it's sad. It's serious. It's so, serious. so what do you think we can do Ooh. to try to deter these kids from the violence and keep them grounded and step fast and, and, and hip hop and, 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 and so that the culture could live. What what do you suggest? Um now you say kids, like what age range are you saying? Well well, you know, I'm mean, old enough to be signed. Oh twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. Twenty one to thirty. Twenty one to thirty. So that generation don't believe in work. Mm-hmm. Okay? <laughs> so <laughs> this I don't know what happened. But it's no working going on. Mm. So, um, to say, you know, to get them a career and get them off the streets or get them into the music industry, like Puff Start, you know, getting the coffee. I don't know if they're open to that. Mm. They're really not open to stuff like that. They're just like, oh, no, I'm a star already. Yeah. Well, what, what, what you think that, that, why do they have that train of thought that they're a star already? Do you blame the record execs for not screening the uh, the old artist development we used to have where artists had to go through artist development so they can learn certain things and, and even the discipline at that time, we, we taught that. So do you think that because there's no more of that, that people can just walk in the game now with no rules? No, I think it's the internet. Mm. It's social media. Mm. They already think they're a star because social media, look at how many followers I got. I'm a star. Just because you have a lot of followers. Followers. But 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 you think that that's a false narrative, obviously. Yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, because most time a star is unreachable, right? Right. That's what a star was, because a star is also seldom seen. These guys are out every day. Yeah. You know, so you can't be a star if I'm seeing you every day. Right, right, you know? exactly. You know, or hearing you every day. So the internet is a bit much. And, and I would agree that um, technology helped... Um, it's a gift and a curse because 
without it, we wouldn't be able to reach as many people as we can. So some of the new platforms actually is amazing if you use them in the right way. Yeah, and it can also be stressful for them because they have to be competing with each other on the internet. Before, back in the day, we didn't have that kind of stress. Right, right. Which, the internet helps you to get famous fast, which is great. Like mm. you said, a gift and a curse. Right. I mean, back in the day, you had to tour the world for people to even know yeah, you. to know you. You had to hit all 50 states. Right. Yeah, buses and, you know, right. back in the day, you, you had to get there. But, you know, brand illusion. Mm -hmm. is what's going on now. And I like to say brand illusion because it's an illusion to, to think that you're a star, but know that you don't have the credits, know that you haven't done the work, but to actually think that in your head because you have one single out, and then you go do a concert with one song, and after that one song that you got on the radio, you have nothing else for the crowd. I've seen that several times. Yeah, they did have some one-hit wonders come out and... You know, a lot of labels got screwed with that yeah. one. So I think they kind of learned their lesson. Yeah. They're not trying to, like, sign nobody on a right. one-hit so, so how do you feel yeah. about the labels that are still here? You still have major labels such as Def Jams, Universal, that are pretty much still controlling the market and, so to speak, controlling the mainstream arts. So what do you think that these people have learned? Because obviously, you know, they come from a whole different era. But if they're able to sustain with the new artists, what do you think the ingredients is? Like, how do they keep themselves up you know, as a, a major record label? I don't know. I think it's really tough for them right now. And yeah. there's a lot of talent out here. There's a lot of talent. In, like, people that's not famous is really talent. So you're saying... Some real talent. The creative on. artists yeah. on the other side may not be heard or, or it's in a voice that the record labels are not tapping into because what they have done now is made people go out and do and get a buzz and yeah. then come back but that buzz could be anything you know it could be a street guy who's just famous in the street for being a d-boy you know that got a few few dollars and somebody said hey man me write you some raps right and there he is he's number one in the country right you know um i know that you come from you know, the Bronx and, mm -hmm. and, and hip hop is got to be definitely in your veins. Yeah. You know, it's definitely got to be in that. your veins. So when you got into real estate real quick mm -hmm. and switch gears, um, what made you want to sell houses? What made you want to get into real estate? I've always wanted to sell houses. And I have to say I have a background from in the streets. Mm. And um, I wanted to leave that behind. Mm. And just, you know, because I remember... When I was in the streets, it was always running around with the realtor, and it's like I could do this. Like, nothing. It's really not that easy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, I always wanted to sell houses. Everybody always say, you know, invest your money in real estate. Yeah, I it's used very to say that. important to do that. So I wanted to sell my houses and um, also do investments myself. Right. So did you get the license here, or did you get to? Yeah, I got it here. So you got it here? Yeah, I got it here. Wow. Oh. And I was licensed in Florida for a little while, and then I gave it up because I was thinking about moving there to Miami. Okay. But now I, I gave up the license in Florida, but still here. And that's 20 a, years strong. That's such a grind. Strong black woman. <laughs> 20 years. Yep, 20 years. In the game, real estate. I am actually taking a cram course next week. I did my oh. pre-licensing last year. Cram. Um, and wow. And I'm pre-licensing course. And I'm going to take a cram course, and I'm going to just go ahead and jump in and take my pre-licensing and um, get my real estate license because, you know, yeah. I've been on the other side of a little bit of the investment real estate, but now I just want a license, you know. And maybe I could work underneath you, you know. Yeah, bit, that, you know? that's fine. Um, so investing and the license is two, two different, different things, ball games. Absolutely. You know that. Absolutely, yes. And absolutely. also, a lot of study. getting the license and being an investor can kind of hurt you, which you probably know that by going to absolutely. classes. Absolutely. Yeah, it can hold you back a little bit, but it, yeah. it's fine. Uh, my, yeah. my, my goal is to get my own brokerage firm. And yes. I know that I have to do three years of uh, real estate before I get, right. you know, As get an that agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that is my goal, though, so... We have a lot in common, you know, always have, you know, yeah. and I, it's really good to see you again. And I just want to kind of touch on a few other things. Okay, I great. know that you, you know, 
you know, move some things around to make it here today. And I really, truly appreciate no, no you problem. for doing that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the streets. Okay. <laughs> you know, let's talk you, about the streets, the streets of Atlanta. Let's talk about the streets of Atlanta. Yeah. You know, earlier on, like I said, you were here. You saw a lot of things going on out here. And I, I see that you got um, news clips in there. And I'm very interested to in, in knowing what made you um, showcase this on your podcast because you are, you know, a host of your own podcast and the owner right. of your own podcast, which is um, Single in the City. Right, Single in the City. Right, right. And I know you're on your how many seasons that. now? <laughs> We're getting ready to shoot season five. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. We've been going, oh, it's been so long, seven years? Seven years, yeah. season five. Yeah. So, so, so tell us a little bit about that because I know Single in the City has to have some type of story street origin to it because I have seen guests such as Sorry the Kid and some other people on your podcast. Yeah. So give, give us give us we a little had, bit of, um, of, of, of your... Um, the original, was it original? Fly Guy DC on the original one. Uh-huh. Yeah, a lot of people. Marvin Dixon and um, yeah. So what, what made you do Single in the City in um, DC? <laughs> right, well... I always have like single girlfriends calling me, talking about their single life and look what happened and everything. And it was interesting. And I said, you know what? I want to do a show just talking about being single. So many people want to know about being single and what to do. Mm. We even have married people on there. So that comes on and say how they got to be married. Okay, before. Right. When they were single before. Yeah. Oh, wow. Of course, <laughs> you know, something <laughs> before marriage, right? That's, that's got to be an interesting podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very. It, we have fun. It's funny. Yeah, we have a lot of fun on. There. I remember you saying that you wanted to do some stuff, but you wanted to have humor. Yeah, I remember you you saying it because you laugh a lot. I laugh a lot. <laughs> you laugh a lot. We always and, have um, something funny to say. Yeah, and so. it's cool too. You know, that's why I said I wouldn't even want to do this if I could, but I have fun doing it. Yeah. You know, it's very fun. because you have to have fun today because it's so much violence. Like I said, so much violence out there. So that's what I was trying to get at. Like the streets. Mm -hmm. How do you pivot around streets? I mean, you're a beautiful woman. You out here on the, on the nightlife, you know, often, you know, you're a professional yeah. woman, but you do, you know, kind of go out and enjoy yourself. Yeah. So how do you avoid this, this pitfalls out here? I mean, well, first off. I'm from the streets now. <laughs> hey, talk about it. I'm from the streets. Talk about it, Michelle. I mean, I was born in Jamaica. Okay. Um, seven years old. I grew up in the Bronx. You know, those are street life. Was already. that Kingston, Jamaica? Yes, Kingston. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So it's already street life, and I have, you know, brothers, all brothers and no sisters. Oh, wow. And I was the youngest one, so I kind of kind of know how to move by, you know, them telling me, you know. Is that just, not the foundation? And, you know, just being in the game, if you know a game. Yeah, 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 definitely so being in the game. In the you game. learn how to count. Like, I spent a whole decade in the game of my life. So, mm -hmm. you know, being in the streets in the game, you have to, like, be watching your back. You have to be doing, know a lot of street mm -hmm you know, street movement. Yeah, absolutely. To survive. So so that brings me to my next topic, you know, artists and dealing with artists and what made you want to actually deal with the artists. I mean, was it the streets that you saw, how you could give back, how you could help, you know, and, and bring somebody up. You knew talent when you heard it. Like what made you want to I'm um, all artists? of the above because if I hear it you know, like artists will come to me and I hear it and I'm like, yeah, that's good. Keep going. You know what I mean? Because right. you want to keep motivating them. You don't want to be like, oh, this is garbage. Right. But um, like when my first artist came, you know, it, it was like, well, a couple came that I never was going to, it was not going to happen. <laughs> Would you tell them <laughs> if they were garbage? No. No? No, because you don't, you want to. You want them to keep going because mm -hmm. everybody has to start from somewhere. Somewhere, right. 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 And Bridging originally, the gap between something and nothing. Yeah, originally when my artist came, he was, I was like, you know, it, it, it's not, you have nice lyrics, but you're not giving it passion. Hmm. So after a while, he understood the passion because if you think about it, everybody liked the Tupac because mm -hmm. he had so much passion, passion. Mm -hmm. in his 
lyrics. Mm -hmm. Spirit. You can mm -hmm. write all day and you could you could write the best lyrics there is, but if you don't deliver that correctly and you don't have a voice for that, just wrap it up. You can't convict in a person's spirit, you know, when you don't have that type of you know, motivation, you know, behind right. you. But a lot of these artists now, and this is this is what I want to touch on, um, that the younger artist is not respecting the older artists. I just recently heard 21 Savage say Nas is not relevant. Oh, gosh. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard something like that, you know. So, so I, mean, I mean, what would make someone like 21 Savage say something like that about somebody who has overachieved in this industry and to this day probably don't even have to write another rap record to be known? I mean, I've seen several artists do that. I saw, um, who was it, Nicki Minaj, and she did, um, what was it? Kim? Was it yeah, Kim. 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 She did, sir. How did you feel about that? <laughs> and I was just like, ah, like, we're all supposed to be together. Right. And, like, right. motivating each other. And right. if you're older and you paved the way for me, give some respect. Give some respect. So you feel like the respect should be given. Yeah, he should have gave him some respect. I mean, he paved right. the way for you. And right. he's probably going to be cocky and say, hey, you know, he ain't paved nothing for me. I came here on my own. And I understand right. that. But no one in the beginning, and I was there in the beginning. The foundation. No one there in the beginning was accepting hip-hop. They thought it was just going to come and yeah, go and absolutely. be something that... I remember, too. I was there. Yeah. I remember... Um, it, it not being, you know, prominent, you know, um, commercial wise, you right. know, and not having videos, you know, until Melly Mail and the message. Yeah, you know, like because that. we was doing it in the park. Yeah. We was doing it in the park before yeah. it even came out yeah. on wax. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I remember how important the DJs were and um, people have forgotten that as well. A lot of DJs used to break artists like it used to be the DJ that Big the beats and brought the artists in, and then the MCs came with the DJs. It was, it was a co you know a collect collective effort. Um, but right now, a lot of times these young artists, um, I guess they feel like they don't need the things that we had to use. So they have a like you said the tools. They have the internet. And they have these other new tools that they just kind of bypass the creative part when we had to you know, read tape and listen for our mistakes and things like that. We didn't have these TV screens, like as engineers, we had reel to reel, we had VCR tapes, you know, for videos, you know, our cameras wasn't as, you know, prominent as these cameras are where you can actually, you know, take a phone and just make a video, you know, we didn't have those capabilities. So I think that all of that stuff came in and just kind of separated us and people lost respect because they don't know how hard it is to go out there and make a beat on an eight-track tape. They didn't know how hard it was to go out in the park or to travel 50 states to get known. Now, it's like I punch a button, a million people heard me. Yeah. I don't need you. It's so easy for yes. them. It's so easy, and they don't understand. The reason why they need to respect the elderly people is because they. it was so hard for them to get there. Yeah. It was so hard. They, they put realize. in the work. They don't even realize how hard it like, was. They cheating the hustle and don't even know it. <laughs> I like that. Cheating the hustle. Yeah. So, vice versa. Some of the older artists mm -hmm. are so mad at the new talent. Yeah. You think that's a mistake, too? In some sense? They shouldn't be mad. Even I mean, I can understand if they the gun violence and yeah, absolutely. they talking about all these things and they have beef with, on, with each other. Um... And the thing about it is that they're so quick to pull a gun now yeah. versus back in the day. It wasn't. We, we fought. Yeah, it wasn't. We didn't lose a draw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It didn't matter if you won. I just didn't yeah. run. Yeah. Just don't run, you know? Yeah, but I, I don't know. I guess they're kind of pissed off because it's so easy for them and they went yeah. through so much. Yeah. So, so the violence is at an all time high. Uh, lost a great artist takeoff not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, should I say. Um, since then, I've heard so many verses from this guy, hmm. which I heard limited verses from him, would probably hear the less verses out of the Migos. So they wait till you die to amplify you, to, to, to magnify you. 
You know, why is that, that people wait till you die? I mean, the dead rappers are better promotions. Yeah, I was pretty hurt about that situation. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I am lost for words on that yeah. one because yeah. that situation right there just took everybody by. Mm -hmm. It was shocking. Mm -hmm. And well, Should it be a message? Yeah, a lot of messages, <laughs> you know? Um, lately, we lost a lot of rappers. And they have been like loving them so much after they died. After they died. Same as Pac and Biggie. Yeah. And we loved them before they yeah, died. Yeah, they was we loved giving them, them love. So yeah, they had the game a lot. Yeah. Every yeah, car that drove love. by. Yeah. Was we was giving them a lot of love. We was, yeah. we was almost mad that they were doing that because we were like, we like both of y'all. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, where this come from, you know? Snoop yeah. came out here and crushed the building. So, yeah, it was crazy. You know, it was crazy. But he is one of the, I would say, pioneers that still to this day that is bridging the gap between the old and the new. Oh really? You know, Snoop still standing. Yeah, he you is know, right. and, and has not compromised in his integrity, you know, standing right. on what he believed in and you know, and took the whole West Coast to another level. And I do believe that Nipsey was about to sit in that seat. Really? Yeah. I do believe that Nipsey would have been as great as Snoop in, you know, long term. Right, right, right. But um Bridging the gap is definitely uh, important to me, mm -hmm. you know, and on this show, um, seeing people like Snoop, you know, being able to do songs from the time he started up until now. You yeah. Know, very creative guy. Um, definitely give him his flowers. So I want to know who your favorite artist is. Ooh. Rap. Ooh. I'm going to say rap, then I'm going to say hip hop. Who's um, your favorite artist? I rap artist. Oh God. Or rap group. I really don't have a favorite. You gotta have. I like a few. music so much. Okay, just name a few. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I like the Migos. Okay, Migos. I like I like the new style. Like I said, I like music. Period. I'm not okay. behind. I'm I'm updated. Okay. Um. I'm I'm still a Mary. Okay, Mary. <laughs> yeah, I still love Mary. <laughs> Did you go to the last concert? No, I didn't. <laughs> okay, but you've probably done been to so many of them. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mary was early on in New York. You know, we was all yeah. out there with the 411. With the hip hop. And, I and love She's Mary. another one. I would say that bridge the gap. Oh, yeah, she's definitely still good. standing. You know, Super Bowl performance, amazing. Yeah, thanks See to Mary Puff. out there dancing, doing the same dances, but. Yeah, thanks to Puff. I mean, he got all the yeah. artists out. Yeah. You know, and he's trying to do some stuff with his son now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So wh when is your show coming back on? Um, We're supposed to be starting shooting at the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have, we, we played the reruns of the last show building up for the new show. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's what we do. So we're doing the little clips. So what made you take a break? Um, We only shoot like 10 shows per year. Oh, so we do like a, a little series and then... How often you guys air the shows? Um, Well, when we're shooting, what, when, when we're you airing... You do once a week. Yeah, we do it once a week then. Once a week. Like every Monday. Okay, every Monday. Okay. Yeah. Your host and your co-host. Yeah, you, you, Marshall. Yeah, do you have the same co-host? You guys are still here? Yeah. Together? Yeah. Okay. So, so you guys are producing your own show, your own content, pretty much. Who chooses the artists that come on the show? Well, you know, we have a lot of requests. Like mm -hmm. right now, we have a list long of requests. So it's like um, we have we have to bring it back because everybody's asking everybody's to be on the show. Asking. And it's funny because I'll just run into people and then they start talking about their relationship <laughs> and what they've been going through. Yeah. And then it is like at the end. Yeah, I, sh I need to come on your show. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay, you want to ask me that the whole time. You didn't have to yeah. tell me about your whole relationship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, you're going to get down to it on, on Single in the City. Yeah. We so have you ever had any altercations? Because that, that's a that's a topic that could be very sensitive to certain people, you know. And um, people going on your show and um, may not be being truthful about their, their um, status. Have you had any type of negative feedback on the show. I'm so kidding. that's what I want some clarity on. The Single in the City is the name of the show. Okay. And we just cool. got the rights to the name, by the way. Okay. And Shout out to the rights to the name. Right. <laughs> so anybody who has Single in the City better take it down because I'm coming at you. <laughs> Trademark. So, right. We trademarked the name. We just got it last week. Okay. And um, we're going to come out with our little Single in the City shirts and stuff. Okay, okay. Congratulations. And everything. 
But as I was saying, what was I saying? <laughs> well, he was talking about the show, and you basically the show is not just about that. So you have another purpose for oh, your yeah. show. Oh yeah, the topic. Everybody thinks that the topic single in the city, the title of the show, is a status. It's mm -hmm. not. It's just the name of a show. It's like mine. Right. Something like that. Right. Yeah. So when you come on, you can be married. Okay. You can talk about marriage stuff because we want to know. The mm -hmm. world want to know. Or before you got married. Right. Okay. So, you know, what leads you to get the ring? Like we have one show that says how she got the ring. And she's telling how she got the ring. Well, the reason why I ask is look personal sometimes. You know, people mm -hmm. sometimes feel very personal about their status, their marriages. Or oh, I don't want to reveal it. I'm saying you, you guys are <laughs> pulling it out of them, you know, or, at some point. I had to know. do that with Sorry Kid, yes. We okay. had to pull it out because yeah. he's being around the bush. Okay, okay, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm trying to get at. I mean, because I know that it, it, it had to happen. It yeah. had to have happened, you know. Yeah. It's people that... But but that's a very interesting sh um, podcast, you know. I, I didn't see any other ones out there like this. Yeah, we're very different. We talk about everything. We we had one show we talked about energy because mm. we're studying energy right now oh. and how it works yeah. and everything. Yeah. So we I'm had big on energy too. Yeah, yeah everybody is in that mode of the energy and yeah. stuff, but not everybody get it. Yeah. Well, jazz music is a science. Yeah. It's a science. It's a uh, circle of fifth and fourths and notes uh, was built on by John Coltrane. It's actually was created from the Al Albert Einstein um, theory. So it's a lot of theory and, you know, energy in music and people don't realize that. So that, that energy that you're talking about, um, I do deal with that every day. So I, I mean, when you play music, you already have mm -hmm. that energy built mm -hmm. up. Yeah, you have to have To the put energy. that out. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I'm an artist too. So... Not a music artist, by the way. Mm -hmm. I, Tell them what kind of artist are you? <laughs> I'm a painter. I paint. So okay. um, when I get into painting, it just gives off such an energy because you're the artist has more fun painting the painting than the person who buys it and take it home. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. because we actually pour energy into that painting. Uh, we've had a couple of paint classes here, paint sips. Really? Sip and yeah. paint? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sip and paint. Yeah, paint. So we... I actually have a company called uh, The Taste of Art. Okay. And I hire, um, you know, young lady to come in and do all the sketches. And wow. People come in and do paint parties. Nice. I think it's very creative. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, so you make mind. art, art, like exhibit art. Yes. You got some of your stuff in exhibits and things like that? Yes. I've been working on the gallery situation. Oh, wow. mm. Yeah, I've been working on getting a gallery, but we did have an art show. And, you know, people came out and saw it. Knew it was a reason I needed to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. The foundation yeah. art. There it is. Yes. And art I do custom stuff back. for people. Yeah. Art you know. goes way back. Yeah. Yeah. From the beginning. So you have been a part of a lot of foundation, you know. And I'm so happy to have you on my show as yeah. a guest. Hopefully one day I'll do your show. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> you know, maybe I have to request. Definitely. Since right. all of these requests is going I try on. to line you up this season coming. <laughs> hey, Trust you know, me. hey, I will definitely carve out the time for you, you know, because you yeah. have always been super solid from day one. Thank and you. And I'm proud of you that you have, you know, made all of this, you know, these accomplishments and you're still here and very professional and, you know, just always been about your bag, you know. Yeah. Always been yeah. about your bag and, and a great mother. Yeah. Great mother, you know, you know, great Thank parenting you. skills. Yeah. <laughs> I um yeah. I wear many hats. I do. Yeah. I'm a hustler, I'm Capricorn, okay. so we work Capricorn, hard. There it is. <laughs> Any grandkid. Yes, one. Hey, Just grandma. one. They try to make put me it out there. grandma. <laughs> So what do you call yourself? You don't like a lot of Mama Mickey. Okay, okay, close it. And then okay. on the channel, it's Mickey News. So I put news on my channel because mm -hmm. a lot of the younger people mm -hmm. don't watch the news. They make yeah. it a point not to watch yeah. the news. Local news, too. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, if you're strolling on Instagram, you're going to see the news. Oh, absolutely. I saw a lot of yeah. the news breaks. You're gonna and see I it. like that, too. Yeah. And I didn't want to be swaggerjacking and steal that for the show because <laughs> I told my God, D. I said, hey, she be doing a lot of the news, you yeah. know. And I'm big on the local news. I even yeah. just told my daughter the other day, I said, you don't watch news. News is depressing. I said, hey, yeah. 
Somebody could be outside your house on your block. And you don't know. And you don't even know. And here you it is. Know. They already told you there's somebody on the loose. Yeah. And you don't even know to even watch out for them. So sometimes that, that's very important. You know what made me originally do it? I was going to Miami. And I saw a hurricane. Mm. And everybody, we were going as a big trip. And nobody knew it was a hurricane. Oh, wow. And it was like, what, what, what hurricane? Nobody watched the news. Nobody, I was like, nobody's mm. watching the news. So I started posting the news, you know, and it's good to know about what's going on. Not only that, you could have a rapist in your neighborhood that you mm -hmm. don't even, and then you have the face on the screen, Man. and you don't know you're going outside. This, you know, facts. Yeah. So, so I'm so proud of you, you know, and your success, and um, selling all these houses. I mean, you into these million dollar homes yeah. right now. I'm yeah. sure. You know, I you do were everything. Selling big homes I last time. I do commercial. Time you I do everything in real estate area. Yeah, yeah you are a commercial yeah. realtor too. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, again, I would like to give you your flowers while you're here. Thank you. You are an amazing woman. You are an amazing talent. Amazing parent. Amazing everything. Talking all that jazz with G Fields, the bridge of hip hop here. Thank you. No, for thank coming. you. Michelle Chardet, <laughs> y'all. Thank you.